I'm pleased to welcome Xavier Leote, who's our head of backend engineering, to our first episode of Behind the Scenes at MetaMarkets. Xavier, tell me, uh, where were you before, before you came to MetaMarkets? Before MetaMarkets, I was at BlackRock, which is one of the largest asset managers in the world. And I was uh, building quantitative investment strategies uh, that are basically data driven and uh, systematic. And what parallels do you see between what you're working on at a place like BlackRock, um, high frequency trading markets there, and what you're experiencing today building products and advertising and media? So one of the similarities, of course, is that we deal with a lot of time series data. Um, and uh, a lot of data we get is messy, has to be cleaned up. Um, it's uh, difficult to process. One of the differences, though, is that um, in the, most of the financial markets, you have the luxury of being able to uh, do a U batch processing at night, on the weekends, uh, during off market hours, which is something that you don't have in the media markets. So, speaking of which, you know, one of the bigger bets we've made recently has been getting our real time processing infrastructure built out. What are some of the biggest challenges that you see when working with real time data? So, one of the biggest challenges with real time data is, um, of course, the scale, first of all. We are dealing with uh, millions of events per day, sorry, millions of events per second, and uh, over 100 terabytes of data per day. So processing all that data requires a lot of resources. Um, a lot of data is uh, very unpredictable, and uh, so that requires a fair amount of planning in order to be able to handle all this uh, data in real time. And we've gone from processing initially, I think when you started, we were probably looking at millions of events a day Today we're looking at uh, tens to hundreds of billions of events a day, and probably sometime in the future we'll hit that trillion event per day mark. What are some of the biggest changes that have occurred with that scaling? So with that scaling, of course, I mean we're at this point we're running a couple of thousand machines in the cloud um, just in order to be able to process all that data in real time. Um, and with that, failure is of course a given. Machines will die unexpectedly. Um, that's something we have to be uh, always prepared for. And so handling all that efficiently and being able to recover from, from those machines dying and uh, or software having issues is always something that we strive for. And our systems have to be built to be reliable and um, basically self-healing. So on the one hand, we've got this data factory that is operating at tremendous scale and keeping that factory uh, running smoothly and healthy is a very high priority for your team. But on the other hand, uh, as in Silicon Valley company, we're always looking to innovate on what we do. What is the most innovative project that your team is working on today at MetaMarkets? So one of our big initiatives right now is to be able to not have to worry about capacity planning, not having to worry about how complex the processing is, or how complex the data is, um, we're basically trying to make sure that our systems can automatically, dynamically scale with the complexity of the data, with the complexity of the processing, and with the volumes of our clients' data, so that we don't have to do any kind of manual capacity planning or manual provision of machines. And that should also help with our reliability, because that means we don't have to worry about any kind of data volume spikes from our clients or anything of the like. So there's definitely a, a machine learning aspect to some of that work in terms of being able to predict load on the system in advance of when it shows up. Right, so one of the key features of that is being able to predict the volumes in the short, um, in, in, at a short horizon, which means on the order of a few minutes to a couple hours, and being able to make those decisions um, on the fly as to how many machines we're gonna um, have to, to provision. and. Uh, one of the challenges there, of course, is uh, incorporating all the metrics, all the feedback loop from our systems, but that information may be incomplete. So we have to be able to uh, dynamically adjust for um, a very, various metrics that we get from our systems and uh, grow the cluster as needed. Sounds exciting. Um, thanks for joining us, Xavier, and we look forward to the next time. All right, thank you, Mike.